Welcome back to another episode of Off the Carousel here on the Field of 68. And I'm thrilled to be joined today by a guy I've known for a long time who was getting his first crack at being a Division I head coach at the ripe old age of 38, Grant Billmeyer, New Jersey Institute of Technology, the Highlanders. Grant, congrats, man. Really happy for you. Really happy for your family. Thanks a lot, Rob. It's uh you know, it's it took a lot of years, a lot of hard work to get here, and I'm honored to be the head coach at NJIT. One thing I don't envy for coaches in your position are guys that are getting the their first head coaching gigs in the middle of the transfer portal era. <laughs> Take me through what it's like to step onto a campus for the first time where you have to re-recruit your roster and also go out and try to identify the players that can fit onto your roster that are at a different level than what you were recruiting before. Like, I got to imagine the last month has been something of a whirlwind for you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it, I got an opportunity to come in and spend three weeks with our returning guys. I, I was at every workout Monday through Friday. I really wanted to know what I have with the players. And more importantly, I wanted them to know, you know, how I was going to be on the court. Um you know, my, my intensity, what I'm going to demand out of them. So th those three weeks, it was really good to kind of to see who was going to be able to play for me in, in my style and, and and who wasn't. And I think the guys that are remaining on the roster, I think they're all going to have great years. And I think they really turned the corner on those three weeks. And I know they're, they're excited going home and, you know, working to, towards the future and looking forward to coming back in July. Um, and then, and then the transfer port, obviously, like you mentioned, you know, it's, you're recruiting a different type of player than I was recruiting, you know, a month ago when I was at the university of Maryland and, um, and the academics here are, are, are very rigorous and, you know, you, it's, it's a different kind of kid that, you know, I, I was recruiting academically than in the past. And, you know, it had to be extremely uh, high GPA wise. And so, so that's been a little different, but it's a challenge um that I knew coming in and something I really embraced and it's 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 been really good and you know there, there there's no there's no gray areas it's either you know he's a really good student and he can get in he can do the work or he's an average student and we're not going to be able to get him in so it's uh it's been a very straightforward process could you have gotten in to NJIT coming out of high school <laughs> being that I went to St. Pat's and I had a pretty high GPA yes the, if, if I went to a different high school well, I, I would have been a favor. That's for sure. It depends on how good they want it to be at basketball, huh? That, that's the <laughs> that's the real answer. Um, what has been the the biggest adjustment going to an America East program? You you went from one of the leagues at the top of the sport to one of the leagues that's going to be a one bid league. I just think you you, you got to do everything you know yourself. You know, you you walk into Maryland and you win a few games. Um. You know, Coach Willard did a tremendous job getting the fan base back and excited, and I think it's a place he's going to be at for a while. But, um, you know, looking over my shoulder is 3,500-seat arena. That's one of the best, I think, should be one of the best home court advantages in college basketball. And now it becomes how do we get people in there? How, how do you sell tickets? How do, how do you make it a good home court advantage? When you're at a place like, you know, Maryland, you're not necessarily thinking about that. How do you – you get engaged with the students and, you know, make, make it fun to come to NJIT basketball game. Um, you know, not, not a lot of, not a lot of tradition in history here. So how do you, how do you get recruits excited about NJIT? How, how do you, how do you get them on campus? Cause you know, once you get them on campus, they leave here blown away because the wellness and events center seven years old, it's the facilities are top notch you know, on the same level as a high major college basketball program. But I think it's just all about uh, all a matter of getting the kids here and then letting them see what, what what's in place and the vision that I have for this program along with along with my staff. So when you when you take over the program, right, you have a lot of guys on that roster that aren't necessarily the players that you brought in. You mentioned uh, talking about your style, how you want to play, how you want to coach. How much of that is going to be adjusting to what you have right now? How much of that is going to be, all right, this is what I want to do. We're going to try to do it my way. Like, how do you have, how flexible do you have to be maybe in what you're running and what you're putting together and the plan that you're putting together for uh, this upcoming season? Yeah, I, I think that's, so. there's always a way you kind of envision, like when I get my first job, you know, this is how I want my teams to look and it's more so do the players fit into that. So you, you could want to, play a certain offense. You want to play a motion offense, a Princeton offense, a uh, whatever, f five out offense. And then, and then you get to a place and you, you, you kind of learn early on, all right, well, 
you know, I can recruit to that style that I want to play in, but what I inherited and what, I, what I'm getting kind of in the spring doesn't necessarily fit that. Um, but I think, I think you just gotta, you know, I've always been a student of the game and, you know, I, I've been fortunate where I learned from a guy for 12 years that, that, that was unbelievable at adjusting from a season to season and the game to game where, you know, I'm, I'm going to try and put in an offense and play defense that fits my player's personnel. Like, I can't say, all right, this is how I want to play. You guys got to adjust if it's not allowing them to play their best of their abilities. So has there been any any adjustment that you weren't expecting moving over to being the head coach? Has it been kind of what you thought you'd be getting into, into this role? Like, has it been anything that has surprised you? Uh, I mean, you're really just moving over one seat on the bench, but all of a sudden all the responsibility comes back to you. Yeah, no, it's it, it's definitely a, it's definitely different. You know, every decision, um, every decision kind of falls on me. Um, but I, I knew that coming in, and when I said to someone, you know, you, you you sometimes get a job and you get a good feel, but you really don't know until you're a month in. And I remember leaving this place on Monday, saying, "Man, this is this is a great job. This is everything I hope it would be." And then some. But sometimes you go for a job, and then. You know, you hear about guys in the first week of their job, they're like, oh, man, I wish I could go back to being assistant where I was at. And, you know, there's certain things they didn't know or, or, or weren't informed of during the interview process. But there has there hasn't been anything that's caught me by surprise, only really good stuff. And there's there's tremendous people here in the athletic department that are, you know, re really supportive of both me and the kids that are in the program. All right. So I did a bunch of research on your Wikipedia page. And yes, oh, you geez. are important enough to have a Wikipedia page. And according to my math, you spent roughly 35 of your 38 years on this earth as a resident of New Jersey. You did a year in college park. We don't have to talk about that, but you're back, man. Are you, are you, are you happy to be back? Like you're, you're Jersey through and through. Yeah, I am. Um, you know, I, I know this state so well. Um, the only difference in what I've lear learned that's, a little bit different from when I left um, last year to come back now is tra traffic is terrible. Um, you know, I, I think when I was leaving, people were in that phase of everyone was kind of going back to work five days a week. Um, but now, like, I, it doesn't matter if I leave six o'clock in the morning or, you know, if I leave nine o'clock at night, you, you, you're you going to hit some traffic. Um, so I, I don't miss the New Jersey traffic. Obviously, there was traffic heading to work in College Park. You know, I'd go the D.C. way, uh, but it wasn't that bad. But New Jersey traffic, which should be, uh, you know, a 20-minute ride is pretty much like a 45-minute ride. So the, the the Jersey traffic is is much worse than ever it, it, than it ever has been. You know, it's bad when you're coming from D.C. and you're saying the traffic is rough. I lived in D.C. for 10 years. I hated driving there. That's, <laughs> that's how you know it's bad. All right. Yeah, so yeah. we're, we're going to put some of your Jersey knowledge to the test here. I got some yeah. questions written out for you. All right. First and foremost, is it uh, Taylor Ham or Pork Roll? Definitely Taylor Ham. I, Taylor I don't Ham. know what Pork Roll is. What's the uh, What's the best way to eat it? On a, on a bagel, egg, and cheese sandwich. All right, good. That's that's uh, you got two of those right. Does Central Jersey exist? Absolutely. I I, I grew up in Central Jersey, so. I like to say North Jersey is kind of where I am, where I'm working at Newark, that area and, and above Bergen County, South Jersey is, is Cherry Hill, Central Jersey to me. That's, you know, that's where I'm from. Pennington, New Jersey, Princeton, Trenton, Hamilton, um, Jersey Shore. I, I like to consider that Central Jersey. So I think there's a North, there's a Central and there's a South. Yeah, my wife actually grew up in Hamilton, and she says the exact same thing. She dies on that hill. Don't ever say anything <laughs> to her about Central Jersey not existing. We'll have a fight on your hand. All right. Are you a tomato pie guy? You're from right outside Trenton. That's where they're from. I am. Yeah, there, there there's not a pizza that I don't like, Ralph. Um, Ma Maryland, I, I had more crab cakes and, and, and seafood than I could ever ask for. Uh, but I've probably gone back to eating pizza five times a week. You'll, you'll probably see me this time next summer at a recruiting event and be like, geez, Grant, you having enough pizza, I'll definitely put on about 25 pounds of all the pizza I'm going to eat over the next year. You're going to come back uh, being shaped like Jeff Goodman, which is never a good thing. All right. <laughs> what do you call it in the summer when you go to the beach for a weekend? Um, Are you a down the shore guy? 
Yeah, uh, yeah, that, that would be the terminology. Yeah, head into the beach. Yeah, I, I can't, I can't get on board with the down the shore stuff. <laughs> I live, I live right outside Philly now, and that's what everybody says. Fans yeah. have started saying it too. I can't, I can't get on board with that. <laughs> What's the best beach to go to at the Jersey Shore? Ooh, man, that's close. What, what, what are we talking currently? Like Grant as a family man? Are we talking about Grant as like a twenty-two year old? Like I, I would say, right out of college, probably Manasquan, because you, you know you could go to Manasquan, you could do a nice little afternoon lunch at Leggett's, and then, and then you can make your way over to DJ's at night. Um, now, as a thirty-eight year old, you know, a father of two, I like to go a little bit further south to the Bayhead Lavalette area um that's that's where i'll spend my times and i'll uh i'll stay away from the belmar night scene <laughs> smart man last one i got for you wawa or sheets definitely wawa that's that's uh, yeah i can't even say i've eaten at sheets <laughs> not a lot of people have man yeah. there's a there's a reason it has a nickname um i'm not going to say it on here uh serious question now though you saw firsthand what kevin willard could do at seton hall at a program that maybe didn't have the same pedigree as some of the best programs in the Big East that maybe didn't have the same level of resources that some of the other programs did. What did you What did you learn from that? And what did you learn from him that will allow you to do something to kind of grow NJIT? Which I, I, I kind of view it as the same situation in the America East as Seton Hall was in the Big East. What, what, is, what can you take away from working for him and seeing the success that he had at the other school in Newark? Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing with Coach Willard is the the way he prepared for everything. It, it didn't matter whether it was an NCAA tournament game or you know a guarantee game against a team that was three and twelve. He 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 prepared every single day like his job was on the line. Um, his work ethic is insane. You know his the time he puts into player development, and you know you can look at the guys we've ha- ha- the guys. We had our last, you know, six years at Seton Hall. We had five guys that wound up being on NBA roster at one point. Um, so just being be, being incredibly hands on with everything. Um, I just think he has an incredible. He, he's a very smart man, and his basketball knowledge is off the charts. So hopefully, some of that rubbed off onto me, and and uh, and it le- leads me to have, you know, a, a good first season. Has he? scheduled you yet or is he afraid does he is he ducking the smoke we all know that you were the the success behind seton hall you were the brains behind that no, i was not i was not that was <laughs> not. We, we had some good players um sandro miles angel isaiah desi jared Roden. so we, we had some really good players that that were, were helped him get that program to the next level you know Rob, we're, we're not playing when i got the job um uh, miami and wake forest was scheduled uh, we got Miami opening night of the season. We play a Wake Forest later. And then I wanted to find two guarantee games that made sense. So we're playing Fordham, which, you know, if we don't hit traffic, is 45 minutes away. And then, you know, Tony Skin is a, a very close friend of mine. Um, so we're also going to be playing George Mason. Um, you know, it's funny. Even, even when people knew I was in the mix for the job, they were reaching out to me about games. And every day a guy on my staff says, oh, yeah, this school wants to play. I said that's good, but we better not be having this problem in three years. If everyone's, if every high major wants to play us, every mid major wants to play us in three years, that's an issue. You, you, you hear things about, you know, I was on a call and a really good mid mid major program was saying no one wants to play us. We can't get home and homes. We can't get guarantees. And if that's how your program looks in a few years, then that's a good problem to have, as opposed to everyone and their mothers calling, email, and texting you and say, hey, we got open dates. Can we can we make this work? <laughs> yeah you don't want to be popular when it comes to putting it to, together those schedules no no not at all <laughs> well listen grant i appreciate the time in again congratulations on the job i only live an hour away uh depending on traffic so i promise you i will be up there for at least one game i'm gonna bring the family we're gonna make njit fans out of them this has been off the carousel grant bill meyer the new jersey in- is it njit or new jersey institute of technology what are we going with um We'll go with NJIT, you know, because you got kids, I got kids. My kids can't, you know, drop the whole New Jersey Institute of Technology, but I get a, I get a good NJIT from both of them. Well, we'll turn them into Highlanders, man. Grant, appreciate you being here. Thanks a lot, Rob. Have a good one, man.
Our partner for today's episode is Athletic Greens. I started taking AG1 during the college basketball season, and I loved the impact that it had on my energy levels. I'm a big coffee in the morning guy, but by the time that the afternoon would hit, I needed another boost. AG1 helped me tremendously, especially on those days when I didn't want to get up off the couch and go hit the gym. Their tagline is, AG1 is comprehensive health and the power of habit in one. And man, that could not be more true. It's nearly impossible to eat and drink in a healthy manner in the month of February and the month of March when you are in my business. And AG1 was exactly the supplement that I needed to improve my gut health and cover my nutritional basis for the day. I've continued that into April. I've continued that into May, and I'm going to continue that the rest of the summer. All I have to do is mix a scoop of AG1 with some water or maybe add it into a smoothie and I'm ready to go. Do it after lunch and you'll be ready to go for the rest of the day. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com backslash field68. That's field68, F-I-E-L-D, the number six, the number eight, and you can get yours now. So check it out and help support this show. Thanks.